Hey booze! In this video, I give commentary based on my opinion. Nothing is to be taken as factual. We are just here to have conversation. We don't expose and we don't sip tea on this channel. I'm giving you real talk straight, no chaser. Let's see if you can handle it. Cause I'm a boss. Oh, hell no. Hi guys, it's Yanni and I'm back with another video. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about the Vogue criticism that you guys are seeing all up and down your timeline. So Vogue magazine is being criticized for the cover making black models look entirely wrong. What's being sold as a Vogue magazine cover celebrating African beauty is being criticized for making black women look tragic. The February 2022 cover of British Vogue featuring nine black models is coming under fire by critics on social media who say poor lighting, makeup, and styling make the women appear unnatural. British Vogue tweeted with a new generation of African models in the spotlight. Fashion is at last embracing what is to be truly global. With British Vogue's momentous all African February cover, meet the young women redefining what it is to be a a model. A behind the scenes video of the photo shoot that Vogue posted on social media shows the models having their hair and makeup done and some of their skin tones are lighter in the video. The cover was shot by Brazilian photographer Rafael Pavarotti with makeup by Amy Drama and styling by British Vogue editor-in-chief Edward Inningfo, who is British Canadian. I saw these incredible models from across Africa who were just vivacious and smart, Inningfo says about his inspiration in the accompanying article. He adds, fashion tends to follow waves. We had the Brazilian wave, we've had the Dutch wave, the Russian wave, the Eastern European wave, and while in the last decade the black model has come to prominence, I love that we are finally giving more space to African beauty. Now he is the first black editor of the British fashion bible Vogue. This week Edward Enenfall's debut edition will hit the newsstands and he's making it clear he won't just be making fashion statements but political ones too, saying Vogue has lost touch with multicultural Britain. He's also acknowledged that young models are, as he put it, pretty exposed and says he will try to do more to protect them. Our arts editor Will Gompertz has been talking to him. So here we are. So it is. This is the, the December issue. My Vogue is about inclus sort of being inclusive. Mm. It's about diversity, sort of showing different women, different body shapes, different races, class, um, sort of tackling gender. Do you think it, 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 it perhaps failed to keep up with multicultural modern Britain? Yeah, yes. My predecessor was here for 25 years. She had, you know, her Vogue, you know, a quarter of a century. Um, she did a great job and, you know, I'll just you're being very do mine. You're being very polite. <laughs> <laughs> Edward, had the magazine got complacent, you think? Um, I mean, you know, I, I've, it represented its time. That's, that's what I can say. It represented the time and I feel we're in a different time now. You do worry, given, you know, the, the rise in mental health issues, particularly with, with, with young women, um, that Vogue can create a series of images which makes people feel anxious uh, and, and dissatisfied with themselves. I mean, the subjects of body image always goes on. When I started in the, in the 90s, <laughs> you know, a sample size was the, sort of a four and a six, and now it's a zero, zero, and I feel it's a conversation that the whole industry has to partake in. 
And Naomi Campbell said in the past, hasn't she, that she's experienced racism in the fashion industry. Have you too? I mean, you know, I, I started as a 16-year-old model. So, you know, I experienced, you know, yeah, I experienced racism, but I had good support. I had great mentors. But I do feel for sort of the young models today who, you know, don't have the chaperones or don't have their mothers with them. I was very lucky. And how exposed are they? Um, I feel they, you know, they're pretty exposed, but we're doing what we can. And what about this, this issue, issue of nudity? I mean, Kate Moss was speaking about it recently, saying that she was uncomfortable in her body, but she had to strip off. She couldn't always see why. As a very young girl, does that need to change? Well, I don't believe in sort of very young girls being nude. What limit on age would you put? 18. So what are we going to see less of in an Edward and a full Vogue? <laughs> what are we going to see more of? What are we going to see less of? We're going to see less of. That's a really interesting question. Um, so you're going to see less of what? Um, what do you want me to say? Well, what are we going to see less of? <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're going to see less of sort of models who don't look so healthy. <laughs> My name's Ami, and I'm a makeup artist. I was born and raised in Barcelona, in Spain. I've done quite a few very good things. I shot with Tim Walker for ID Magazine. The day we shot was one of the coldest days of the year. It was snowing outside and we shot outside as well. That was great. My aesthetic is real, more than natural. I want to see real people. I want everyone to feel like they could be it in a magazine. When you do creative work, just say yes to the things that you really, really want to do. I think social media, it made fashion more accessible to everyone, so we can tell our own stories. My career highlight is seeing people I've been working with from the beginning doing very well. Hi, my name is Rafael Pavarotti. I'm from Brazil. Um, I'm born in, in Amazonia. I came to, to London to, to shoot for Dior campaign. Critics say the cover photo is unflattering. Not impressed. You should have done this years ago with better lighting and no fake hair. By the way, how many look like them or me in management with Vogue? Arthur and speaker Bernie Fraser tweeted, it's bloody awful. The styling and aesthetic is entirely wrong. We, as usual, have been erased. This isn't black girl magic. It's black girls tragic. Sack the damn stylists and photographers. In fact, sack the entire team, SMDH writer Tywo Williams tweeted. The fact people are praising them for crumbs? They put these models in terrible lighting, they dress them all in black like a funeral, and they have them all in terrible 60s style wigs, another person added. Others like what they saw and praised the magazine for publishing a cover celebrating diversity. So before I jump in and give my opinion, I wanted to also do a little bit of digging and look at the history of Raphael, the photographer's past work in history and so he did a campaign with Dior and these are some of the images and I also wanted to do a little digging on the past history and work for Amy as well the makeup artist I couldn't agree more with this tweet. It states here, a lot to deconstruct here. The framing, 
the deliberate darkening and post-production, the dead expressions, and the absence of joy, saying so much about how white fashion institutions view black women, the artistic choice to put them all in black despite vivid colors probably working best for this particular group of skin tones, etc. But all I really want to say is we're in 2022 and Vogue still can't properly light black women. This lighting is a travesty. So finally, I can go ahead and give my opinion on this entire situation. I wanted to use this example of Rihanna doing a cover shoot for Dazed and how she had two models. And you see how they portray her in this photo shoot. You know, she has two male models. Of course, they're of darker skin complexion and they are seen as prompts. And that is how these women were portrayed on the cover of a magazine that was supposed to showcase their beauty and highlight their blackness and this is the way that they decided to go about it another issue that i had was the darkening of the skin why is it that our skin is always being showcased in an animated way and it's almost like they did or they practiced modern day blackface on black people because that used to be a thing back in the day during the whole blackface era black people would actually wear blackface in order to to be accepted within the entertainment industry. And so we're seeing this once again, history repeating itself. I think black people collectively are just tired, tired of constantly seeing our oppression on the cover of magazines. Why on earth would a black performer put on blackface and demean him or herself? They were, they, look, this is the 19th century. They had limited options. They were expected to. Why? Um, because it made the audiences comfortable. Comfortable? Yes, what with that, that big feeling at ease, that combination of um, the thrill you get when something is very exotic and, dis and distant and against this backdrop of constant debates about black people, their place in society. Are they human? Are they not human? Do they, do they deserve rights? Do they not? And here are these strange, you know, here is this, in some way, erasing of individuality. Um, look on the, on the stage. Here are these characters who are somewhere between types, stereotypes, and caricatures. You can be fascinated, you can be excited, but you can always feel superior. Did it take doesn't away? have to disturb, you know, your comfort zone or make you start thinking, well, gee, I, I really do need to think about, you know, um, anti-slavery. <laughs> That's not what this is about. Also, a lot of the um, of the shows, it contained very sentimental songs about um, slave times and being back on the old plantation. And when Negroes, the performers went to the city, they were often, you know, showed in very buffoonish um, circumstances. You know, there was zip, they were, they were shallow dandies or they were contrified buffoons who really didn't know how to make their way or they were winches, you know, either, you know, kind of absurdly seductive um, women or big Aunt Jemima types, all played um, for, a, for the early part of the century by men. Did the makeup dehumanize them? Did it put up a wall and make him less than people? Um, it made them types, and that is, in a way, making them, making them less than people. A type can be, in theater, very grand. Um, the type of the tragic hero or heroine, for example, but a type that is a stereotype is always a collection of um, what people are considering the lowliest and simplest and, you know, um, most easy to look down on traits. The notion that blackface made white audiences comfortable. And excited, com both. Really, comfortable yes. in what way? They weren't, uh, they weren't comfortable having someone on a stage above them, looking down on them, uh, being held up on they, a pedestal? How, what, they were what not comfortable we with, with, with watching, they would never have been comfortable, and we're not, um, with watching black 
actors why? play, let us say, serious roles. You know perfectly well why, <laughs> because <laughs> America <laughs> was very racist. Of course they weren't. Slavery was all about creating um, visions, types, stereotypes of an entire race of people as subhuman in every way. Another thing that really stuck out to me with this entire situation was when I was doing research on Edward Innenfall and how when he was being interviewed, he tried to downplay racism and he tried to downplay the racism that he faced while working in the fashion industry. And he tried to downplay it by saying, well, I have always been well supported. Naomi Campbell said in the past, isn't she, that she's experienced racism in the fashion industry. Have you too? I mean, you know, I, I started as a 16 year old model. Yeah. So, you know, I experienced, you know, yeah, I experienced racism, but I had good support. I had great mentors, but I do feel for sort of the young models today who, you know, don't have the chaperones or don't have their mothers with them. I was very lucky. And how exposed are they? Um, I feel that, you know, they're pretty exposed, but we're doing what we can. So this is the man that is behind the cover and he is also behind the photo shoot. And I think he stuck to what he feels makes white people more comfortable. And that is to showcase black people in character or in animation. And he felt like this was the way to do it. And so of course we see these prompts on the cover of a magazine called Vogue that is supposed to represent represent black beauty, African beauty. And it's just ridiculous. It's a mess, you guys. Like it is a mess. This is my opinion. You don't have to like it, but it's a mess. And to me, it just represents modern day blackface. It represents how we're on the cover of British Vogue, which majority is for white people. And the only way that we can be accepted among them is when we're in character. We have to be in character. We can't be natural. We can't be authentic. We can't be joyous. We can't be happy we have to look like prompts so that is my opinion when it comes to this entire situation we can talk about the lighting we can talk about the wigs we can talk about the makeup we can talk about the photographer but at the end of the day honestly it was the team that was strategically chosen to create this image that just simply was not right for the direction that we are trying to head in as black women I think that's the real issue here because at at the end of the day, I do see the art when it comes to the photographer. I see the art when it comes to the makeup artist. I see the art, but was this the best way to represent black beauty on the cover of British Vogue? No, not with the message that they are pushing. So I didn't really like this creative direction that they took with this campaign. I did not like it at all. It's horrible. They should really throw it in the trash. And I actually feel bad for the models because they're not given that many opportunities. And there was a model, I don't know which model it was. And to be honest, I don't even wanna highlight that this is how she felt, but she spoke out about how she was disappointed. She just said that she was disappointed in the project and the outcome of the project, but she was so excited. And if you watch the video of them behind the scenes, the girls were so excited, you know? And I think when they saw the the cover I think they may have been a little disappointed all of them to be honest because that's probably not what they thought that they were going to get when they were doing the shoot so that's all that I have regarding this video I would love your thoughts and your opinions make sure you comment them down below and if you're new here please subscribe hit the notification bell so that you are notified for when I upload this is real talk with Yanni where I keep it real so we can heal and I will see you guys in my next video